It's Brian Preston, the money guy. All right. Next one is from CJ. He says, after maxing out my 401k and Roth IRA, should my next dollar go to either an automatic ta- after tax 401k Roth conversion, that's my 401k offers, or just after tax if I don't plan on retiring until at least age 60? Any thoughts? Ooh, man. CJ. All right. So, first off, man, Brent, I wish there were a tool. I wish there was I wish there were like a guide, like an instruction manual. When it comes to me thinking about like where to put my money, I wish there was like a step by step guide of how to think through that. Wouldn't that be an amazingly valuable I know. You, tool you, to you be able to use? You're looking for me to kind of dance with it and hold yeah, it that's up. It. I mean, that's it. A, I mean, that is kind of the thing. We do have the financial order of operations. And it is interesting if you look at step six max out retirement. Mm-hmm. And, and CJ, you asked about that apex predator that we all love and know as that mega backdoor Roth mm-hmm. conversion. And if you have an employer that has that after-tax option in your employment plan, and you've already done your 401k, you've already done the Roth IRA, and here's the big thing. Make sure you're not squeezing out the employer's contribution because mm-hmm. that is so powerful. You want that free money from your employer. But if you still have the ability to put more in that after-tax that's unique. Yep. And that's something that really you need to do a, a measure twice component on because uh, I like the thought of you being a tax-free millionaire one day. Yeah, I, I think that uh, we love the mega. I mean, we love it so much. We actually do talk. I mean, obviously, we have the free deliverable. Go to learn.moneyguy.com. You can actually check out the course where we talk about the mega backdoor Roth and what's available when you have after tax. It's an amazing planning opportunity. But I do think like most things, if you're going to begin utilizing that and capitalizing on that, you have to do this Stephen Covey thing. You have to begin with the end in mind. And you already alluded to that. Hey, I think that I'm probably not going to retire before I get to age 60. Well, if that's the case, and we assume that no laws or rules change, you're going to be great because you're going to have access to those dollars post age 60. If your circumstance changes though, and you start thinking, man, all right, well, maybe I need to retire at 55 or I want to retire in my early 50s. Well, then you do have to balance, okay, should I be doing mega backdoor or should I think about building up this after-tax account so I have some sort of bridge to get me there? So long as you have thought through that and you have a fairly clear picture of that, I love the idea of supercharging your Roth savings. And I think it's really, really unique because I don't know if Daniel knows this. I'm going to look over to see if he knows this. How many 401k plans in this country even make available after-tax contributions? I want to say it is a very small percentage of them. So if you happen to be at an employer that even allows you to do that, just recognize that's pretty wild. That's pretty awesome. And there has been legislation uh, at the end of the last, end of last year. We thought it was going to go the way of the dodo bird. We thought they were going to get rid of it. So we don't even know how much longer our ability to do mega backdoors are. So if you are someone, when you log in your 401k and you see pre-tax and you see Roth and you see that third guy right there, that after tax, I think you really got to sit down and assess, man, is this something that makes sense for me? Because it can be a super, super, super exciting opportunity. Yeah, we kind of, when we do 401k reviews, if I see the after tax, I'm like, I bet they're going to have index funds. I bet they're going to have Roth already built into their plan. It's it's really shows that your whoever your trustee of your plan is probably has got either somebody on their team, you know, meaning a, a financial advisor mm-hmm. or a team that's given them, or somebody in the organization that's a financial mutant that is really doing a good job for 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 taking advantage of all the planning opportunities within retirement plans. All right, Ruby, I'm sorry. I'm gonna I'm gonna just add one more thing. I hope you don't mind. If you don't have it, don't automatically assume, oh, my boss stinks. My employer's awful. Oh, they don't make this available. Why is that? 401ks are fairly complicated animals. And especially when you get to the end of the year and you have to start doing testing, you have to make sure that there's no discrimination taking place amongst your highly compensated folks and your non-highly compensated. When you add the after-tax component to the 401k, it begins to change some of those dynamics and it begins to change some of the testing that has to take place inside the plan. So it's not uncommon that we see after-tax contributions in very large plans, think like Fortune 100. You don't see them as much in small business plans only because it really does begin to affect the testing and limit some of the flexibility that exists. So I just want to throw that out there. Just because you don't have it doesn't mean that your boss doesn't like you. It just means that maybe that doesn't make sense 
in your plan right now. I just felt like that was worth mentioning. Yeah, that's a good disclaimer. 